I work in the field of drug discovery. So we make new drug molecules for different diseases. And currently, I'm working towards making new drugs, or what I would like to call kryptonite, against Cryptococcus neoformans, which is just a really long name for a fungus that is shown in the image there. This fungus is widely prevalent in our environment, thanks to eucalyptus trees and pigeon poop. So what if it's there everywhere? Why do we care? That's because this fungus causes meningitis in human beings, which is an infection of the brain that could lead to coma and eventually death. And how does this fungus cause this disease? When we breathe in the air, the fungus enters our lungs. And if you're a healthy person, nothing happens. But if it's an HIV patient who has really low immunity, then we see the infection in the lungs first. And then the fungus travels to the brain, where we see meningitis. Globally, nearly 300 million people are affected by really serious fungal infections. This is pretty much the population of the entire United States. And every single year, there are more than 200,000 new cases of meningitis by this fungus seen in HIV patients. And over 90% of these patients die from the disease. So what are the options for someone with this disease? Currently, there are two major drugs in the market. Again, if there are already drugs in the market, why are we spending time to make new drugs, right? That's because these drugs have some disadvantages and some really serious side effects. The one to your left is an injectable, which means every single time the patient needs the drug, they need to visit our doctor to get the injection. It's not really practical. And also, this drug not only kills the fungus, but it also kills your kidneys. It's extremely toxic. The one to the right is a capsule, so you can take it orally, but it shows severe interactions with other drugs. And since most of these patients are HIV positive, they're most likely on a lot of other drugs. And it's not good to have something that may reduce the effect of another important drug which may actually be saving their lives at that point. As if that was not enough, this drug doesn't even kill the fungus. It only stops the fungus from growing, which means the patients have to take this drug for the rest of their lives. So we not only need new drugs which are effective, we need drugs that are safe. And in, if, in an effort towards that, previously in our lab, we purchased 50,000 molecules from a company and tested them against this fungus. We were extremely lucky. We found one molecule that was somewhat effective, not super good, not super bad, but there. And this might just look like white powder in a while for most people, but as chemists, this is what we see. Chemically, this is what it's made up of. Again, it's not just random colored balls. It's made up of elements from the universe which are arranged in a very specific matter. The big gray balls represent carbon, we all know carbon. The little gray balls are hydrogen. Blue ones are nitrogen, and the red one is oxygen. So once we know this basic arrangement of the elements, we can tweak the structure around. For example, we can replace one big gray ball with a blue ball, or a little gray ball with a big gray ball. And by doing this, every time you change one little thing, it's a completely new molecule, which is very different from the one we found. And that's what is really cool about chemistry, right? So by doing this, I made 300 variations of the one that we found. All of them were tested against the fungus. And more than 100 of them killed the fungus. 10 of them were able to kill the fungus in as little as six hours. And that's really exciting. This means the patients don't need the drug for the rest of their lives. It's cost effective. When we tested them against mouse, they were also active orally. So that's really good news for us. We're working really hard to take it to the next phase to test them in humans. Hopefully, our kryptonite will make it to the market. Thank you. <laughs>